Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. It's good to be with you today. As you can see in the background, I'm back in the office for the first time in quite a while with these things. And I hope that you had a great holiday weekend. Uh, I know where we live, Sunday and Monday turned out to be great days. Uh, the others weren't quite so swift. But nevertheless, I hope you've taken some time to think about yourself and your place and the world and how we have been blessed in this country. And I sure hope you understand that this is a great place to be from. It's not always having the best decisions or doing the right things. But we are so blessed to have been given the opportunity to live here. And that's something that none of us, none of us could do anything to earn. So this morning I'd like to share with you, as we start this week on a Tuesday, <clears throat> from Psalm 97 and verses 9 through 12. It goes this way. For you, O Lord, are supreme over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. He protects the lives of his godly people and rescues them from the power of the wicked. Light shines on the godly and joy on those who whose hearts are right. May all who are godly rejoice in the Lord and praise his holy name. <clears throat> this passage is talking about yours and my relationship with God. Now this is a very personal thing. I can describe to you mine. You can describe to me yours. But I can't really understand what you are experiencing, nor you me. But our, our relationship with God is something that's very personal and very important. And I know there are a lot of people out there who seem to be living great lives and have basically nothing to do with God or the church. I know there are a lot of people out there who are very active in churches and who live very un godly lives. But I'm not called here to judge. I'm called here to just share the goodness and the grace that God has for us. And so this morning, as I look and think about this passage, it starts out because saying by, Oh Lord, you are supreme over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You know, a lot of people have a lot of different gods. Oh, I know they don't talk about it that way. But they do. Some of them are even horrible in that their their God is themselves. In their minds, they're the only ones that count. They're the only ones that matter. And anybody who, who is not understanding of that is just worthless. And they'll take advantage of you and take advantage of you and take advantage of you until you have nothing left to give to them. And then they throw you away. There are many who have gods of money and things, lots of, quote, toys, unquote, who like to show off, like to be seen. Then there are got folks who have gods of power. I get to make you do what I want. That's the definition of power. Pure, raw ability to force you to do what I want you to do, whether you want to or not. And you see it in family relationships. You see it in political relationships. You see it in business relationships. But that's not the ultimate power. The ultimate power in this world is God. And it says here that he is exalted far above all other gods. Okay, maybe for the right here and now, for the moment, doesn't look that way. I grant you that. 
But in the long term of things, it will. We all come into this world with the same amount of stuff. And we all take the same amount of stuff with us when we leave. Everything in between is just sort of something. <laughs> but let's go on. Because he also says, you who love the Lord hate evil. If you truly love God, then you hate evil in any form. And I know a lot of people think of evil as the Nazis, and boy, that was evil. Uh, I've studied some of that. My great-grandparents were exterminated by the Nazis. I understand that kind of evil, but there's an even more grotesque type of evil. And that's the subtle one. That, that It's not so obvious what they're after, but it's the evil that just puts and puts and puts you down until you start believing things that aren't true. Another form of greater evil is someone who uses love or acts of love as a way to promote evil. And I've known some of those. And they're not, they are not very nice people. But it says here in this verse, you who love the Lord should hate evil, all kinds. And then it goes on to this wonderful notion here. He, that's God. He protects the lives of his godly people and rescues them from the power of the wicked. Now, please notice here, it doesn't say that he does that at our immediate call or that he does it in the fashion we want him to do it or the timing. Awful lot in life doesn't appear to work that way. But it's not over. And God will protect you. No doubt about it. Somehow, some way. Doesn't mean you won't experience pain. Doesn't mean you won't experience suffering. Doesn't mean that you won't experience bad times. But over the long haul, God's going to protect you. And he'll rescue you whenever you find yourself in the throngs of evil. And then the passage finishes up with, Light shines on the godly and joy of those whose hearts are right. May all who are godly rejoice in the Lord and praise his holy name. You see, God's grace and love shines on those of us who love him in ways that the world cannot understand in the ways that other gods can't do. He, he gives you a sense of peace and a sense of joy that I know because I know because I know he's right there. And I've been to the place where I wondered, and I'm sure you have. But we can know when we reach that place of wonder that God is still there. So I hope today you'll do as the last part of this verse says, may all who are godly rejoice in his name and praise him. May you find God in your praises and may you find God in a special way in your life. Well, thanks for listening. If you have a prayer concern or a need, let us know. We'll do everything we can as fast as we can to help meet those needs. I'll be back again tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day.